So why is it that I'm standing here today in a talk surrounded by topics concerning education, humanitarian, and I'm holding a pair of shoes? Well, not even a pair, a single uh, left shoe. Is it because I want to reminisce my days back in preschool, where I would bring up something that I really like for show and tell? This shoe looks old and dirty, but it's very significant to many other people. So. I'm just going to leave it here in this little thought bubble and hopefully come back to it. And with that in mind, I'd like to give this assertion, this line of argument that, well, we happen to spend an absurd amount of money on electronic devices like smartphones every two years. Just think about it. Even on a contract, $60 a month or something, that's over $1,000 over two years already. The same can be said about sneakers. People pay an absurd amount of money for sneakers, over $200 even. And like any ridiculousness, there's always a root to it. Any absurdity, there's always a root to it. Why do we spend so much money on smartphones? Well, to answer that, I present to you the paper of the extended mind published by Andy Clark and David Chalmers in 1998. Now, in it, it establishes the premise that our phones, our electronic devices are extending our mind, in that we are no longer performing cerebral tasks in our head, no longer contained by our brain or skull. And that would really explain why you spend so much money on a smartphone. And admittedly, I'm a victim of both, as you can see. But wait, 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 wait. Why am I talking about smartphones? I thought we were supposed to be talking about sneakers here. That's the whole topic, isn't it? Well, like our s almost symbiotic relationship with our smartphones and electronic devices, we may have some form of connection towards our sneakers, which you know, presents to you this argument, this line of statement that it's more than just sneakers. The first example of this is the fact that, well, sneakers are a niche market. A niche market is, of course, a specific part of the market that focuses on a product or a specific audience. And from there, the uniqueness in that is that it creates its own form of needs, wants, and demand. And that's why, to some people, price doesn't really matter. And for a niche market to exist, you, of course, need a niche audience. And here we have the sneakerheads of this entire culture and community. Now, this is a Facebook group, a collection, a collective of sneakerheads with over 17,000 members and growing. I checked just last night, there are now up to 19,000. Congratulations. That's a lot of people that like their shoes just a bit too much. And it'd be unfair of me to explain to you how cool it is, how, what it feels like to be part of this entire subculture. So I thought, hey, why not give them a say in all of this? So my name is Pablo Leopando. I am 19. I work in the hospitality industry, and I love sneakers. My name is Michael Klein. I am 20 years old. I'm studying at the moment, but in part-time a uh, sports you know, basketball coach. I obviously love sneakers. I'm actually just turned from every brand to an Addy head. Uh, my name is Willen. I'm the director for Soul My Sneakers. Um, my name is Anthony. Um, occupation, I'm the founder and co-owner of Blaze Space, and I'm also a civil engineering and law student who currently works part-time in a law firm just right. across the road. That's cool. Um, and I love sneakers. Okay. And yeah, my name is Alex. I'm a co-founder of Lay Space as well and a website developer on the side. Oh, and nice. um, yeah, I love sneakers. Give or take 5K. I'm going to say five grand. Five grand over three years. Yeah. And okay. right, we'll push it to six grand. We'll push it to six. We'll push it to six. I'd probably say close. Probably a bit... I actually have no idea, but I'd say somewhere between five and ten grand. Right, which I five think is too is not too bad. Yeah, no, not too bad. I'd, I'd say around the same. That's a very good question, but at the same sense, I won't be able to tell you because, right. quite frankly, I stopped counting after two hundred pairs of shoes. <laughs> I'd rather 
think about all the pairs that I bought, you know, how much I loved every single individual pairs I bought and like the little stories that came with every single pair. So this is my favorite pair of shoes. This is the Raph Simmons Adidas collaboration. Uh, this is my favorite pair of shoes because if it wasn't for the sneaker community, I wouldn't be able to have this right now. The ones on my feet, the 3M Ultra Pad. This is the shoe. It is just so light, so comfortable. Adidas new technology is the boost. Right. And they've just taken over the market. Nike has absolutely no idea what to do. Oh, it's a tough one between the Prestos or the Harachis. For me, it's the Gel Light 3. Gel Light 3? It's oh, retailed yeah. for 600. Right. Um, what, do we, what do we have here? So, so these are the um, the made in Japan Gel Light 3s. Um, they were like they're a special edition 25th anniversary sort of celebration of the Gel Light yeah, 3. I guess. I know mean, it's a tough one. I like the Jordan 4. The Jordan 4. Yeah, Jordan 4. definitely. Yeah, very classic. So now we've just so established now, the premise that oh, these people who happen to spend thousands of dollars in sneakers happen to have lives as well. Surprise. However, they're not the most dedicated of this entire subculture. These are what we sneakerheads call camps. Now, to regular people, it's very weird that a group of people would sit days in advance for a pair of shoes. But to us, it's almost blasé. Right. Let's dive into this photo a bit. Let's give it some contextual information. This photo here, or these photos here, were taken on the 26th of May. The shoe came out on the 28th of May. They've been there since the 25th. Three-day camp for a single pair of shoes. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, who in the right mind would camp for a pair of shoes? You just happen to be looking at him right now. <laughs> ah, yes, I, I very much know my own priorities. I am year, in year 12, studying HSC and camping for a pair of sneakers. Thankfully, my principal is not here today. Now, Enough about that whole establishment of the whole niche audience. Let's take a look at some of the data, the sneakonomic, if you take it. You guys remember Anthony and Alex from the video? They happen to be the founders of a website called Lace Space, a website not dedicated to selling sneakers or shoes, but shoelaces and shoe accessories. They've been nice enough to lend me some data. Now, I, I heard that laughter, but you'll be surprised at how much money they make. Right. Their website started since 2015, last year in March. Over 2,000 orders direct from their websites, on average of three laces per order. Let's give it a hypothetical uh, situation. Let's say they sell those laces for $13 each, cost $5 to produce, T uh, multiplied by a modest estimate of 2,000 orders, taking into account three laces per order, that's a profit of $48,000 on shoelaces, not even shoes. That's a big number, especially for me. And when you actually look at the actual sneaker market, in the US alone, it is a $22 billion industry. And they're capitalizing on it. It's, a, it's, it's smart. That's what startups are. And profit is what drives the market, you know? Economics 101, well, prelim if you're doing the HSC. And what drives the market, apart from profit, what helped them achieve these profits, are of course competition and innovation. And let me tell you, the amount of technology that goes on what goes on your feet is surprisingly advanced. Now, Adidas is shaking and stirring the sneaker world with something called boost technology. It sounds fancy, doesn't it? It practically is a, like a, a type of sole that goes on your shoe. That's essentially it. It looks a lot like styrofoam. That's one of its many criticisms. But the thing is, these things are so advanced, it requires one of the world's largest chemical producers to help make the shoes. And well, how much more passion and dedication is needed in this? Let's take a look at another example. This is Angus Wardlow. Now, this is a picture of him from the Hypebeast mini documentary on boost technology. Yes, there is a documentary on the type of sole of your shoe. It's also not every day, not every industry, that has an amazing title, such as Director of Futures Adidas Innovation Team. It sounds like it's something straight out of a sci-fi film. We get that there's a lot of technology in this, like any other thing that want to be sold. Fridges nowadays actually have computers in them. 
So why the fuss? Why still the fuss of how much, how is it more than just sneakers? Well, it's a barometer, a representation, a projection of our own individuality, right? Close your eyes. Imagine you are designing a pair of sneakers. You like to think to yourself, okay, comfort is number one, it's key. You achieve that, where do you go from now? Of course, your sneakers have to be cool, dope, fresh, lit, stylish, whatever. How do you achieve that? That's the difference between shoes and sneakers. Sneakers is like designing anything. You start with a blank canvas. You take in inspiration of whatever you enjoy, whatever you feel. Shoes, you have to uh, achieve a certain objective. School shoes, what do, they have to be? Uh, what do they need to be? Leather, rubber sole, black. The And it restricts my, my possibility of dressing how I want to be. When you're designing a pair of sneakers, that whole philosophy is thrown away. This is Tinker Hatfield, the man who made the Air Max and Jordan's 3 to 30. He has said, that's a cool design, but what's your story? My story is that I'm Thai Tipper One, I'm Thai from Thailand. Ha <laughs> funny, my parents were comedians. I'm not joking, you can have a look at my birth certificate if you like, but still, I came here when I was little, I grew up here, and like any teenager who turned 15, I like to get myself a job, because financial freedom is amazing for a prepubescent kid. I mean, the only time I manage to get something that I want is either Christmas, or your equivalent, or your birthday. The pay was atrocious though, $9 an hour, I could not not buy anything for weeks. I started buying my own clothes, because to me, to 15-year-old me, I thought to myself, I'm a big boy now, I buy my own clothes even though I never do the laundry. To this day, might I add. And well, I got into shoes because a friend of mine sent me an invite to that kickstand group. And boy, that's a cyclical cycle if I ever see one. But the thing is that these sneakers are more than just a representation of myself to me then. It was a vehicle for me to communicate and to socialize. I met two of my greatest friends through sneakers, Max and Cameron. We lined up for a raffle a pair of shoes we didn't get them, but we didn't walk out empty-handed either. I got my other friend addicted to shoes. He went from gaming to sneakers, which happened to cost more, so I feel sorry for him. And then I learned so much about humans, like individuals in general, society in general, just from sneakers. I like to call this effect the peacock effect. For example, I am wearing my school uniform right now. However, you're most likely looking at my red shoes. It catches your eyes, doesn't it? It's like a peacock in a flock. It spreads its beautiful feathers just to grab your attention. In other words, I'm an attention seeker, but let's ignore that for a second. In this little community, we like to be individualistic. We want to be unique, we want to be original, we want to be different, doesn't everyone? But then when you take into account seven billion people, you're not very unique, aren't you? You can't be a unique little snowflake when there's tons of snow f f uh, falling down from the sky. And here's a physical example of that. My friend Martin loves to dress his best to one of those camps. So what does he decide to wear? White shoes, black pants, black hoodie, green, very organized, very fashionable, might I add. But some people tend to think the same. You actually can't tell who is who. It doesn't help that they also happen to look the same. Sorry, Martin. But to be fair, that also happened to me. <laughs> yes, I'm a hypocrite. I've learned that very long ago. <laughs> and that's not even the story that the designers want to tell. This is one of my favorite pair of shoes, the Air Max 95, made in 1995. Duh. It's designed by Sergio Lozano. If you're watching this, I'm sorry if I butchered your pronunciation. It happens to me as well. Now, he took that quote from Tinker Hatfield, that's a cool design, but what's your story? Too hard. This shoe is mimicked after the human anatomy. The sole emulates the human spine. The upper material, the gray, white, and black, replicates the human tissue and muscle. And the rib cage and the laces, well, like I said, it looks like a rib cage, doesn't it? That's why people don't buy sneakers. People don't buy their best clothing shoes from Kmart or Target. 
because they're not original, they're not innov uh, innovative. There's no sense of self in it. It's just bland, like porridge. I'm sorry if you like porridge. I, yeah. And that's what we as individuals want to be. Unique, different. I keep on telling that, and we emphasize that. And that's why I love this community. Pictures worth a thousand words. If it's a pair of Air Max, however, it's worth 15,000 Australian dollars. And like I said, I've been talking a lot about how it's more than just sneakers and how absurd it is. I can see some of your faces right here going, it's not every day, it's not even your world, it's not your regular world. So I'd like those people to again explain to them what it's like being in their own world. It's more than just sneakers because of the community. A lot of people are cool there. I meet some, you know, some of the coolest guys there, and I, I won't be in the sneakerhead community if there wasn't like a good community there. So that's the best I can tell you. How's it more than just sneakers? Oh, because of the people I meet throughout the groups, and because of swap meets, you just walk around meeting a whole bunch of people. Um, yeah, you just gotta create friendships more than just shoes, and that's even if that's a, a discussion that you talk about all the time. Well, I mean, like shoes, you gotta wear it for every day, right? So it comes back down to individual character, you know, like how you match your clothing with, you know. Um, I can't. I think it might be a little bit ironic, you know. A lot of people might make shoe contact before eye contact. Right. So I guess, like, you know, at the end of the day, like Biggie said, you gotta dress to impress. So I guess, you know, that's why, I, for me, I start from shoes to, you know, to top, so. Bottom to top, not here. Yeah, that's right, not look the other way around. Like, it's always been like that for me ever since I started. So yeah, I always, the same here, same. you know, like when you like pick up a wardrobe, I always start from the shoes first, yeah. and then you work your way up. up. So yeah. that's right. <laughs> it's become more of a, like a lifestyle, I guess. It's not just about buying shoes. So from the outside, people sort of just don't understand right. that thing oh you spend so much money on shoes but I mean through sneakers and through copying things and trading things with people we've met so many different people and made so many different friends and, and that's how it has become more than just sneakers now because it's a whole community that we're a part of and now it's your business as well yeah and it's yeah, our exactly. business as well yeah exactly yeah. like we built a business on yeah. the back in terms of the culture itself I think yeah it's more than it's more than just sneakers and trading and wearing shoes and like buying and copying nice shoes I think it's a very much very much a community and you can see that through all the online all the online forums the kickstarts and yeah. shop and swap. Yeah, and I think through that you just meet a huge number of people, make a lot of friends. Like through it, I've met people from Melbourne, I've met people from Brisbane. It's very much its own kind of microcosm of society. Microcosm of society. That's what he said. And well, I guess he is kind of right. For all the faults that this industry has, for all the faults for all the goods, the positives, the negatives that this entire subculture has, just bear in mind, it is only a reflection of yourself and therefore your society. Thank you.